they don't really like me Cause I go fuck your bitch and fuck your mom and I all right, tough. YouTube pranks. A style of videos that have existed on this platform. All right, like four more videos after this and then slide into Christian. Were, there was a time when they were carrying the entertainment side on YouTube. Though a majority were innocent, a handful of them were downright dangerous and led to serious consequences. In today's video, we'll be talking about the most dangerous pranks on YouTube. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be a little bit different. Since we're going to be talking the about goal. pranks that can easily be faked, we're going to have a scale at the bottom left of the screen showing how strongly I think they're real or fake. Blue will be shown when I think the prank is real. Yellow will be when I'm not too sure. Or maybe it's a mix of both. And red will be when I think it's flat out fake. Keep in mind, the color being blue doesn't mean the prank is good. These are all incredibly stupid and dangerous. Also, the video that I uploaded last week instantly got demonetized. So Anger. if you guys didn't see that on your recommended, I'm letting you guys know that another video video exists and you can watch yeah the new video. twitch pack that i'm dropping tomorrow got demonetized because of master chef sam pepper kidnap prank samuel sam pepper was an english youtube prankster he made videos in the united states and the united kingdom and is today known as the guy who faked pranks and has several allegations laid upon his name 2014 was a different time pranks were actually welcomed on the platform and sam focused on public pranks usually involving females because views and today we're going to be talking about his two most controversial pranks starting off with his fake hand ass grab prank now i can't show the footage because youtube age restricts every re-upload of this prank so basically sam would do this with his hoodie right have a decoy arm and then he would go up to girls and ask for directions and then whoop, whoop. shit is crazy he would just squeeze their ass like that yep that's that was the prank and that's right ladies and gentlemen that is not only that but it's on video now the prank that he's most crazy so. and that also ended his pranking career was the killing best friend prank where he and his friend colby prank their other friend sam goldback by kidnapping him and killing colby in front of him if you've never heard about this prank you're probably like what the fuck i know we'll talk more about if these were faked or not later in the video but this video received so much hate that sam uploaded an apology video titled i'm sorry in this video he says he found out at an early age that everything on the media was faked so he decided to take advantage of this with staged pranks in order to to get views and make money in doing so yeah he was getting the clout and the money but random people that were watching just thought he was a complete dickhead this i never do that i know that i know who i am as a person he notes that the ass pinch prank was the first video that ended up getting a lot of hate and rightfully so when i first made myself look like a massive douche was when I did the fake, um, fake ass pinch prank. And he also admits that he asked the girls to react in certain ways so the video could get more views. So yes, it was fake. But initially, instead of saying it was fake, he chose a different route. And that was to say that the video was a social experiment, which I can't even begin Nigga. to describe how stupid the that fuck? is. Considering he filmed a fake prank where he was harassing girls. And instead of backtracking and being like, all right, y'all, this was stupid, but it was fake. He didn't. He just said it was a social experiment. This caused art to be released painting him as a horrible person and some allegations from women and he says in the video that apparently some people were even calling him a which led him to become paranoid because the fact that anyone the knew that probably. Met, was able to google him and think different probably the internet at jay probably yeah, did a video on this nigga there's google there's everything like i was scared like oh whenever i meet new people they're gonna google me this is what they're gonna think of me so after some time of not being on social media mr pepper decided to come back to youtube but this time with innocent pranks nothing fake but they just weren't hitting the same views wise not only that, but he was also getting a ton of hate for coming back to YouTube. He was becoming irrelevant in front of his eyes. Then, the genius that he is, he decided to fake another video. You see, he was afraid of becoming irrelevant. He admits so in this apology. Any big YouTubers that's watching this, you know how you constantly have that fear in the back of your head that when am I gonna go irrelevant? This video didn't do as well as this one. This one didn't do as... It's always in your head. And we can tell he was desperate to not fade away from YouTube. That brings us to the killing best friend prank, which Sam explains was planned and faked with Sam and Colby. Sam and Colby were two huge viners back in the day, and some of you may know them now from their massive channel where they visit haunted locations. So, the video comes out and backlash began. And, I mean, it makes sense that there was backlash. You quite literally traumatized the kid for views. British newspaper Metro even compared the video to an ISIS-style execution, and an online petition to have Sam Pepper removed from YouTube gained over 100,000 signatures. In Damn. response to the ongoing criticism, Mr. Pepino started a GoFundMe campaign, stating that he would delete his YouTube channel if $1.5 million were pledged to him. The campaign was removed shortly afterwards, along with the accompanying video that was posted on his YouTube channel. Though many were and still are skeptical as to if the prank was actually faked. I mean, those tear 
characters from Sam Goldback look very real. Maybe the dude was just a really good actor? But many comments point out that he didn't even seem to be acting at all. The pair even released their own video explaining that the prank was fake, just throwing my two cents in, but I have a feeling the prank was most likely real since Sam Pepper probably wanted to come back to YouTube and show everyone like, look, I can make a good real prank, but due to the backlash just fell back on the, ugh, yeah, I faked it guys. And if Sam and Colby were in on this horrible prank, that's pretty scummy too. I'm sure they're great guys, but pretending to watch your friend die for clout isn't really that funny. It's pretty weird. So the theory of this being corny real, ass pranks. Sam Goldback's realistic tears, all three of them panicking and pulling the, it was just a fake prank card, is personally what I'm leaning more towards which is fucking horrible if that's true that's psychological trauma though i've never seen sam and colby outright say that the prank was real i'm pretty sure the last time they mentioned it was on some sort of podcast i saw on the sam and colby subreddit shout out to y'all but many fans are skeptical as to if it was real or not all i'm gonna say is sam goldbeck is a pretty good actor if uh, if that was in fact fake anyway nowadays sam pepper streams on kick and posts the highlights onto his youtube channel the channel's dead though as it has 2.1 million subscribers but he can't even pull 5k views he gets a ton of dislikes based on his past controversy and allegations, which I'm not going to cover in this video. And I don't know what his main source of income is or what his main goals are, but what is certain is that he became what he feared most irrelevant. Tough. In the hood pranks. I mean, okay. In the hood pranks. Series of videos where pranksters would go to low income cities and fuck with people for the hell of it. We had many of these, which is why this is such a broad topic on the list. But some notable ones are yeah, the in the prank, hood prank, 5 prank, N word prank, and which is just going crazy back in the day. Prank. Now, I honestly think a lot of these were real. I think this was a point in time where pranksters had a lot of ego, considering how mainstream pranks were getting. It seemed like you couldn't open up the YouTube homepage without having a prank recommended to you. I don't even have to explain how dangerous these pranks, considering gun pooled, gone wrong, gone sexual, were right in the titles of these videos. Like real yeah, shit. Remember every time. In every time video, you open up YouTube. Say, Cock TV. Oh, those stupid ass pranks right like there. Fucking C, one of the pranksters, Mo, gets punched in the face and falls back. And let me just tell you, it doesn't look fake. And towards the end of the video, the other half, Ethan Bradbury, pulls up a random guy's pants and a pistol falls out. Then the video ends with him saying he's sorry and they edit in a gun sound, I guess to add dramatic effect to the ending of the video. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now this specific part could be fake. It kind of looks like the guy dropped the gun on purpose and it wouldn't be a surprise if these guys just paid this dude a couple bucks so he could drop a gun and include it in their video. Out of curiosity, I researched what these guys have been up to since their channel hasn't seen an upload in the last five years. And it seems like they got into filmmaking or at least Ethan did. Their social media seem dead, and Ethan on Twitter doesn't let the I'm Ethan Bradbury meme die. What's up, guys? I'm Mo Bradbury. I'm Ethan Bradbury. I'm Ethan Bradbury. Like, bro, it's been half a decade. Let it go. <laughs> the 5-0 prank consists of Vitaly and his friends asking residents if they sell drugs, and when they say they do or say they know a guy, they pretend they're speaking into a police mic and say, 5-0, we got him. And I do think this one is real all the way through, considering the amount of blurred faces and the guy straight up telling them that they could get shot if they continue doing this. Next, we have Roman Atwood's N word prank which i just think is flat out faked in the video he goes around calling black people neighbor but yeah it sounds similar but even the top comment on that video itself points out that neighbor literally sounds he nothing like the n-word joey salads did the same thing but used the word nickel a nickel you just say white boy what the concept of the prank is still fucking weird going up to black people and making them think you said the n-word what the fuck it even sounds stupid saying it out loud and lastly, Roman Atwood brought us the flashing children prank. YouTube, do not demonetize Bro? this video. This is for educational purposes, okay? Bro? The prank where he and his friend go up to children at the park and pretend to flash them Bro? in a robe, but they're not actually naked. They have t-shirts with positive messages like stay in school and don't do drugs. Look, I've always known about Roman Atwood and I have watched a few of his podcast clips. He seems like a good guy, but a prank that's borderline Felix is insane. And I don't want anyone saying, Tuv, you're soft. This was actually funny. Because 12 year old me loved these fucking pranks. I thought they were hilarious. But from the outside looking in, it really was 30 year old men thinking of concepts to fuck with black people and children. Fucking in corny. Felix way. Again, I'm aware that pranks were different back then. Like, and it's fucking like wild, wild west. Skin. But looking back, it is alarming to have that niggas is dying over this prank shit now. Children prank. Niggas yeah, is like losing their life over this prank shit. So that's why it's a little understandable. But uh, that's just my take. Rice man hanging prank. 
Victor Lee, aka Riceman, was another generic pranking channel that staged pranks, but today we're gonna be talking about the time he pretended to hang himself in front of his mother so she could see his swinging body. I can't what? make this shit up. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lily Lee, aka Riceman, and today I'm gonna do a suicide by hanging prank on my mom. When she comes How home, you do that? here's what she's gonna see. He then explains that some people have actually killed themselves trying this prank, but he, being the genius, why would you do is, that? Came up with a device to not hurt himself. 100% safety. It's very simple. I will separate the knot and the end. Why would you prank your mom like that? Yo, the these motherfuckers wow, do uh, anything for clout. Device. I wouldn't be surprised if Elon Musk. This shit really surprised me. What niggas doing for some clout? I'll show the rest of the prank, but I'll explain it to you. The mom comes in and instantly faints and hits her head on the floor. The clip then cuts to him in his room alone, saying that his mom laughed about it later and to eat more rice. Whatever the fuck his outro was. This is just traumatic. When it comes to long form content, that shit not fucking cool, bro. Work, but I'll give him credit. When it comes to short form content, he's doing pretty good for himself. He does interviewing strangers on the street content, which some could argue is as obnoxious as pranks, but hey, at least it's not a suicide prank. Pedro Ruiz, shooting book stunt. In 2017, Pedro Ruiz and Mona Lisa Perez wanted to go viral on YouTube and had a vlog series on Mona Lisa's channel. Though they saw no success and eventually Pedro wanted to start his own channel where the content was a lot edgier. For his first video, he and Mona Lisa decided to pull a stunt where he holds up a thick encyclopedia up to his torso area while his girlfriend shoots at him with a 50 caliber Desert Eagle what? hoping the would be stopped by the book. What? A viral hit. What? When you see a 50 caliber handgun, you're thinking, damn. But what's inside, what's ridiculous, is this 300 grain, is this 300 grain ca 50 caliber bullet. The stunt went incredibly wrong and his pregnant girlfriend ended up killing him. No fucking shit! Watching and it's incredibly eerie hearing Pedro talk about the possibility of dying. Hoping she hits the book and not me, but the most trustworthy person that I trust in this world is my girlfriend. So you're probably wondering. Oh my God. Thing, his death is on video. Yes. However, that part of the video wasn't released for obvious reasons. Oh my the God. What was said was released though. Babe, I'm not doing this. I can't. Come on. Babe, if I kill you, what's going to happen to my life? Like, no, this isn't okay. Oh my okay, fucking babe, Kyrie, God. I don't want to be responsible. You won't as long as you hit the book. As Nigga. As you hit the book, you'll be fine. Come on. The battery's going to die. Come closer. Then you have to go back more. No, no, just right here. It's fine. Come on, right there, babe. Shots fired. Stop, babe, stop, babe. End of recording. Pedro Ruiz was pronounced dead at the scene. Mona Lisa was arrested on charges of reckless discharge oh, of a gun, which was later changed God. to second degree manslaughter. She was bailed though, and when her trial came up, she pleaded guilty and received a six month prison sentence and 10 years supervised probation. Wow. So sad their two children have to grow up knowing- Just ruined they fucking their fucking children's parents. life over a stupid ass fucking dumb ass prank. Just ruined your kids' lives. Oh, oh my God. Nas EBK, taking it too far. Nas EBK is a 19 year old New York drill rapper who had a lot of buzz surrounding his name in 2021 and 2022. The New York drill scene is extremely violent with gangs killing members and then making diss tracks about them and in some cases even making dances on the way that the member died. The Naughty Bop being the prime example of this with a dance created to mock the death of a 14 year old gang member, Naughty Osama, brother of the very popular rapper Didi Osama. The dance includes punching yourself in the ribs, mimicking being stabbed. The New York drill scene is some of the scariest shit when it comes to to rap considering how fast they make diss tracks about each other's deaths. Anyway, today we're looking at Nas EBK, who yes, is a rapper, but also took part in two prank videos with YouTube pranksters Naughty Cuz and Booba 100. In the Naughty Cuz video, the premise of the prank was to go to their local airport, go up to people, and say, that's my bag, give it back to me. And I don't blame you guys if you just fell over your chair laughing hysterically because that is a hilarious prank concept. Anyway, the problem begins when they go up to a couple and the guy isn't having it. He's not playing along, he's trying to protect his girl, and Nazi BK doesn't like this. So he begins becoming aggressive himself. He then proceeds to say, Google me, I'll beat you up, I'll stab you right now, as he shows off the knife in his pocket. He got mad because he pulled an unfunny prank and the guy acted normal. The caption on the video says that the knife is a prop and on a re-upload of the prank, Nas himself commented, bro, take this down. That's not a knife, you weird. 
and it's a toothbrush. It's a prop. The comments called him out though, as anyone with a brain cell knows this fucking is weird as shit. Then, in the Bubba 100 video, they're messing with a grocery store employee and at one point remove his hat. The employee doesn't like this, so he takes his hat back, and then Nas takes his hat again, and when the employee is visibly angry, Nas then kicks the man and runs away. Yo, 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 back up! Tell that, yo, tell him back up! Oh, shit! Yo, yo, what are you- Nas was arrested and charged with terroristic threats, that's for the airport prank, and I'm not too sure if he was charged for kicking the old man, but apparently the cops were already investigating him for second degree murder for a shooting that happened in Times Square earlier. Wow. He's probably locked up and someone posts on his Instagram for him, but the comments are just people clowning on him for being stupid. Yeah, keep that fucking Tanner monster Cook. off the streets. A recent case of a YouTube prank gone wrong involves Tanner Cook, who runs a prank channel. Generic pranks adopting from the Danny Duncan style, where it's a mix of a vlog and pranks throughout it, but NBC News reported that it involved the Google Translate feature. Anyway, something ended up happening where 21-year-old Tanner ended up getting shot in the stomach by 31-year-old Alan Coley. That's Coley the shit was I was talking about. Facing several felony charges, including aggravated malicious wounding, use of a then they got a prank and somebody and got shot. Felony and discharge this recently happened. Within a building. Tanner has told multiple outlets that he's going to bounce back from this and go right back to uploading his usual prank content. You can tell this dude has the clout mentality, where the clout takes over basic principles of life and causes you to make horrible life decisions not really a good way of living life oh yeah his father's also been getting harassed by people online telling him that his son deserved to be shot and since this Damn. happened last week there are no further updates on this story that prank shit is fucking corny right, guys, as hell that's gonna be it's it. dangerous as hell you, you fucking with people it, sure leave a like if you guys like, are new to the channel you know. make sure to subscribe Turn on they gonna start banning that shit soon make sure to follow me on instagram and tiktok i guess niggas is I'll gonna start TikTok doing real jail time yeah, for that dead fucking that prank